every major Democrat in the country has called on the governor of Virginia to resign after a racist photo surfaced from his medical school yearbook. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Just to give you some context, you might recall that in 2017, the Virginia governor's race was one of the first major electoral tests of the Trump era, and it revolved in large part on issues of race. For example, there was a debate about the state's Confederate monuments, with Republican candidate Ed Gillespie arguing to keep them in order to educate people. Our history is our history, and I believe that we need to educate about it and that we need to teach about it. And so my view is that uh, the statues should remain, and we should place them in historical context so that people can learn. We don't have to glorify the objects of the statues. We can educate about them. Who uses statues to learn? Read a book. Watch a film. Talk to an expert. I never see kids standing in Columbus Circle staring at the statue because they have a test the next day. I got a quiz in an hour, Stone Man. Talk to me. The only thing I've ever learned from a statue is that Pigeons all have IBS. <laughs> Not only are Confederate statues symbols of slavery and white supremacy, they're also ugly. I mean, this is an actual statue of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest. I mean, look at his face. Is that the face he made when he lost the Civil War or when he walked in on his parents having sex? <laughs> or both. Mother, father, I have terrible news. Oh, no! So that was the context for the Virginia election, which was won by the Democratic candidate Ralph Northam. But now, just over a year later, virtually every major Democrat in the country is calling on Northam to resign after his own racist past surfaced on Friday. Calls are getting louder this evening for Democratic Virginia Governor Ralph Northam to resign after these racist photos from 1984 surfaced just today. A decades-old yearbook page suddenly in the spotlight tonight because of this picture of two people, one in blackface, the other in a KKK hood. The page belongs to Ralph Northam. He's now the Democratic governor of Virginia. That's him in the tie in 1984, the year he graduated from the Eastern Virginia Medical School. Northam has apologized but has not said which one was him in that picture. Wow, that's a real lose-lose. <laughs> that's like being asked whether you're Eric or Lyle Menendez. <laughs> I don't know. Does it matter? <laughs> I'm no professor of political science, but it's not good when you have to specify whether you're the one in blackface or the one in the KKK robe. <laughs> There's no good option here. Even the curtain in the background of that photo had to hold a press conference to apologize. <laughs> Also, this was in a yearbook? How do you even sign a yearbook like that? Too racist to be forgotten? <laughs> of course, it was a yearbook for medical school, so it would probably be impossible to read. <laughs> now, you would think this would be pretty straightforward. If you're caught doing something that horrific and your entire party tells you to quit, you resign, end of story. And yet, somehow, the story got worse as the weekend went on. In less than 24 hours, Northam went from admitting he was in the photo and apologizing for it to claiming it wasn't him. When it surfaced Friday on the website Big League Politics, condemnation from fellow Democrats came hard and fast. Northam acknowledged the photo and apologized twice, saying it does not represent the person I am today. Less than 24 hours later, he said he was absolutely certain and he never believed that it was him in that picture. When I was confronted with the images yesterday, I was appalled that they appeared on my page but I believe then and now that I am not either of the people in that photo. Last night, I finally had a chance to sit down and look at the photograph in detail. Um, it is definitely not me. Uh, I can tell by looking at it. I recognize that many people will find this difficult to believe. Oh, do you? <laughs> You're telling us that a racist photo surfaced and your first instinct was to say, yeah, that's me, but then you looked closer and realized it wasn't? <laughs> Shouldn't even be a question. Most normal people, if you ask them, did you ever wear blackface or a KKK robe, would go, absolutely not, that's insane. But your reaction was, well, what was the prom theme? <laughs> and yet Northam's defense got even worse and more convoluted. He tried to claim that he knows it's not him in the photo because there was another time when he did wear blackface, and he remembers that time very clearly. My belief that I did not wear that costume or attend that party 
stems in part from my clear memory of other mistakes I made in this same period of my life. That same year, I did participate in a dance contest in San Antonio, in which I darkened my face as part of a Michael Jackson costume. It is because my memory of that episode is so vivid that I truly do not believe I am in the picture in my yearbook. He's actually arguing that it couldn't have been him in blackface because there was a different time he wore blackface. <laughs> it's not a defense. That's a confession. <laughs> Try that next time a cop pulls you over. Officer, I'm totally sober. Usually when I drive drunk, I swerve a lot more. <laughs> Even if it's not you in that photo, admitting that you did wear blackface at a different event is also disqualifying. It's not just an embarrassing story. It's racist and dehumanizing. And yet, the press conference, believe it or not, got much, much worse because Northam then went into detail about how he won the dance contest. <laughs> and a reporter later followed up with a question that provoked one of the more cringeworthy moments in recent political history. It was a, a dance contest. I had always liked Michael Jackson. Uh, I actually won the contest because I had learned how to do the moonwalk. You said that the competition in San Antonio was a dance competition? Yes. It was that you danced the moonwalk? That's right. Are you still able to moonwalk? Oh. Uh, <laughs> inappropriate circumstances. My wife says inappropriate circumstances. Look at his face! He actually thought about doing it. That is the face of a man looking to see if he has room to moonwalk. I can't believe. can't believe anyone has to say this, but you can't moonwalk your way out of this one. <laughs> His wife was pretty quick on the draw, though. Inappropriate circumstances right away. <laughs> Obviously, this isn't the first time she's had to stop him from moonwalking. <laughs> you know, it's so good to be here at this christening. You know, I, I think if Michael Jackson was here. No, Ralph! <laughs> also, I'm gonna guess that reporter changed his question on the fly. Man, I know I should ask about his plans to stay in office, but I really want to see if I can make a moonwalk. <laughs> so who? How, who are the guys who finished second and third to him in a dance contest? <laughs> now, the response from Democrats has been nearly unanimous. Basically, every major Democrat in the state of Virginia and Washington and across the country has called on Northam to resign, and yet at least one Republican tried to use the Northam scandal against Democrats, Donald Trump Jr., reposted a tweet from Senator Kamala Harris congratulating Northam on his victory two years ago that said, congratulations to Ralph Northam and his team for showing that Virginia won't stand for hatred and bigotry. Don Jr. added, well, this is awkward and didn't age well at all. <laughs> you might not want to comment on what's awkward and not aging well. <laughs> your, your dad, your dad is the birther who proposed a Muslim ban and said Nazis are fine people, so maybe sit this one out, grease frightening. <laughs> now, every major Democrat in the country has called on Northam to resign. He should listen to them. Staying on at this point would be inappropriate circumstances. This has been a closer look. <laughs>